RFI is, is, a, is a topic that is hot at the moment. Uh, I just came from a panel where uh, a number of industry leaders discussed it. It is an issue. Uh, our customers demand and expect us to take action, take action, and, and do better at it. But as with any of the issues that we have in industry, sometimes it's taking a little bit out of proportion. Uh, two important topics that, that I would like to start by uh, mentioning. One is that, by and large, you know, the industry is very quick uh, to deal with issues of interference. We just had the statistic that 76% of the interference cases that we see across the main operators like Imarsat, Intelsat, SES, Utelsat are dealt uh, within 15 minutes. Of course, there are the high profile cases of what we call institutional interference, uh, where for a variety of reasons, institutional players attempt to, to interfere with satellite communication services due to events that are happening, political events. A and those uh, are high profile and are a little bit more difficult to deal with. But as an industry, I think we are making good progress in tackling those, in addressing those both technically, by helping the user, by moving the user to another frequency band, by taking mitigation measures, and institutionally by uh, uh, raising the concerns and having a framework that addresses this case of interference. Along the same line as RF interference, our customers want cybersecurity. They want us to take proactive measures. They want us to invest in our networks as an industry and make them as resilient as possible. It's not possible to be perfect on cybersecurity. And the trick is to invest as much as possible and, and have in place all sensible precautions uh, that you can have to have a secure network that our customers trust. I think Imarsat is doing well on that. We, as, in, as, as every other major operator, we have been the subject of advanced persistent threats, viruses, we have been, if you wish, attacked. It's part of the business. You cannot pretend it does not happen. And I think over the years we have been uh, getting increasingly better at dealing with it. And dealing with means being proactive, call it preventive me medicine. Dealing with, you know, the robbery and changing the locks afterwards is never a very good strategy in cybersecurity. We have very good contacts with the institutional players and across various governments that help us monitor and evaluate our networks. We do regular penetration testing on our networks. We deal with sensitive government traffic normally with separate chains of control. And many times we have separate equipment uh, or secure rooms. So those facilities are in place across the group, not only within Marsat government. Uh, we have dedicated staff on cybersecurity. Uh, the best example is that we started last year, uh, mid last year, we did set up a security operations, a cybersecurity operations uh, team, not a big team, but a team that is monitoring uh, the threats and the attacks that we receive on a 24 7 basis uh, out of uh, Holland. Uh, it then uh, prioritizes and investigates, has a first line of investigation 24-7 uh, of those attacks and the ones that things carry a, a bigger threat or uh, could be uh, damaging to the organization, escalated to a small analyst team that then takes uh, evasive action. Richard Manuel, our director of cybersecurity operations, is in charge of that team and that's a perfect example of how Imarsat is trying to be at the forefront of providing our customers with as safety a network as possible. First, I can tell you that there is a lot of it. Uh, I don't think Imarsat has done so many different things and has not been as innovative in its existence as it has been through the last couple of years. If you just look at our existing franchise for a startup, Elbert, we are launching new products or improvements of our products across all the market segments that are we working. I'm not going to list them all, 
but you know you have things like iSight Phone Pro, Low Profile Big M, HDR, and a number of others. We are reaching out and trying to expand our market segments, and in certain cases we are repurposing our L band and preparing the L band for the future, where we are going to use the good characteristics, the excellent characteristics of L band, where it is strongest, where it plays to the benefit of our users. And at the same time that we are doing that, we are starting to launch our Global Express service. Uh, the Imarsat 5F1 satellite was launched on the 8th of December. It has finished all its uh, testing, including the bus and the payload, and passed with flying colors. Uh, we are now starting to do alpha testing and soon beta testing. And there is a whole plethora of products that are coming on the gay band space as part of Global Express to extend the range to not only provide better mobile service to our users, but it was starting uh, reaching out to the traditional VSAT markets that we have not addressed over the last few years.